Well, the, it's the title of a new book that's just been published that I've written, The Great Inflation and Its Aftermath, The Past and Future of American Affluence. And in the book, I argue that the rise and fall of double-digit inflation uh, was the most important economic event of the last 50 years. Um, some of the consequences of the rise of double-digit inflation, inflation went from uh, about 1% to about, in 1960 to about 13% in, uh, in 1979 and 1980. Uh, one of the consequences was the election of Ronald Reagan because Americans at the end of the 70s were so upset with inflation that they essentially kicked Jimmy Carter out of the White House. Uh, some of the uh, consequences of the decline of inflation, disinflation, inflation went from about 13% uh, in uh, 1979 and 1980 to 4% in 1983 and down to 1% in 2001. Uh, some of those uh, consequences, including the stock market boom, uh, real estate boom, consumer spending boom, and I think uh, ultimately the, the financial crisis that we're having now because people became conditioned by uh, stock prices and real estate prices that just constantly seemed to go up and so they got very careless and complacent and the consequences of that carelessness and complacency is what uh, we're seeing now in the current financial crisis. I don't think there's any doubt now that we are in a recession. Um, uh, payroll employment has declined for 10 consecutive months. In the uh, third quarter, there was a slight decline in gross domestic product, which is a measure of the output of our economy. Uh, most economists expect there to be a very sharp decline in GDP in the fourth quarter. Uh, you're seeing large-scale layoffs. You're seeing substantial declines in sales. Uh, General Motors sales for October were down 45 percent. Uh, Best Buy has predicted that its sales in the next f uh, four months will go down f 5 to 15 percent. So I don't think there's any doubt that we're, we're now in a recession. Well, I don't think that they should be hysterical uh, and uh, in their anxiety. I think they should be prudent. Um, I think that they, you know, they should go out and buy the presents they can afford, and uh, they shouldn't they shouldn't go on a shopping spree if they can't afford it. But I don't think that the consumers should either be overconfident or underconfident. They again, I think they should be should be prudent and self-restrained. Well, I think it would be desirable for the federal government to prevent these companies from collapsing but only if there are uh, stringent conditions imposed on many of the constituencies of the auto companies. Uh, the union needs to get, make substantial concessions on wage rates and labor costs. Uh, the existing creditors for or lenders to, to GM and, and other, the other uh, big three auto companies need to write down their debts uh, substantially because the, these debts can no longer be afforded uh, by the auto companies, uh, and there probably need to be some concessions by some of their dealers and suppliers as well. Uh, in those circumstances, I think that the federal government ought to provide financial assistance to the industry, but absent those uh, circumstances, I think that the companies ought to be allowed to go bankrupt. Well, that is a good question, and um, I, I really don't know the answer to that. I think that he will, the, the, the thing he needs to most do is he needs to create a, a, um, a climate of confidence. I do think he will introduce, as he has said he would, a substantial stimulus package, economic stimulus package, which will be designed to prevent the recession from becoming too severe by temporary increases in spending for uh, infrastructure, roads, sewers, uh, the like, uh, and pro possibly some tax cuts as well. And I think in, for, as a temporary measure, these are justified, and they could help the economy get through a very uh, rough spot. I think it's true that, uh, that the $700 billion package that Congress voted was intended to help the financial industry. And I think if the Congress wants to help the automobile industry, that they ought to pass separate legislation, or that they ought to explicitly authorize part of the bailout money for the auto industry. 
Um, but I, I agree with Paulson in the sense that, um, that this ought to be a political decision that the Congress should take and that the administration should not use the financial rescue package to finance it.